In the previous lecture, we discussed a concept known as index of refraction. Now, the index of refraction gives us the ratio of the speed of light within a vacuum to the speed of light within a certain particular medium. Now, we know that the speed of light within different mediums has different values, and as a result of that fact, there exists a phenomenon known as refraction or the bending of light. So, refraction is a behavior of light that is exhibited when light passes from one transparent medium into a second different transparent medium. And this phenomenon, once again, is a direct result of the fact that the speed of light has different values within different mediums. So to see exactly what refraction of light is, let's examine the following diagram. Let's suppose we have two different mediums, medium number one and medium number two, and this line is the separation line, it's the boundary that separates medium number one from medium number two. Now, let's suppose for argument's sake, that the index of refraction of medium 1 is given by N1 and the index of refraction of medium 2 is given by N2 and N1 is less than N2. So let's suppose medium number 1 is air and medium number 2 is glass. So let's examine a single ray of light known as the incoming or incident ray that is traveling in the following direction. And when it hits the following surface, when it hits the boundary between these two mediums, two things will take place. So firstly, some of that ray of light will reflect, and this reflected ray is shown in the following diagram. And by the law of reflection, we know that the angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflection. Now, the angle of incidence is defined as the angle that the incident or incoming ray makes with respect to the normal line, where the normal line is the straight line that is perpendicular with respect to the boundary line. So this is our angle of incidence given by theta 1. So theta 1 is always equal to our angle of reflection. Now some of that light will essentially reflect but because medium number two is in fact a transparent medium, the rest of that light will continue moving from medium one and into medium number two. And because the index of refraction of medium one is different than the index of refraction of medium two, refraction will take place. So our ray of light will essentially bend. Now the a ray of light can either bend away from the normal line or towards our normal line. In this case, because the speed of light within air is higher than the speed of light within glass, or because the index of refraction in air is less than the index of refraction in glass, our refracted ray will essentially bend toward our normal line and angle number two will which is defined as the angle of refraction will be less than angle number one, which is the angle of incidence. So, angle uh, of refraction is essentially defined as the angle that the refracted ray makes with respect to our normal, uh, a normal line. So, angle number two is the angle of refraction, and angle number one is the angle of incidence. So, once again, let's examine the following two important points that we must remember about refraction of light. So if the ray of light enters a medium in which the speed of light is less, as in this case, then the ray bends toward the normal line that is angle 1 is greater than angle 2. So as in this case, we saw that the speed of light within medium 1 was higher than the speed of light within medium number 2, and so that implies that the angle of incident 
incidence, theta 1 is higher than the angle of refraction, theta 2. And so the ray of light that is refracted will bend toward our normal line. On the other hand, if the ray of light enters a medium in which the speed of light is more, then the ray bends away from the normal line that is theta 1, the angle of incidence is less than theta 2. So if we imagine that the light is now traveling from this direction to this direction, we see that now this angle will be less than this angle because the velocity of light within this section is less than the velocity of light in this section, <clears throat> in that section. So, now we're going to define an important law known as Snell's law, also known as the law of refraction of light. So, Snell's law, or the law of refraction of light, gives us a relationship between the angle of incidence, theta 1, the angle of refraction, theta 2, and the index of refraction of both of our mediums given by N1 and N2. And Snell's law is given by the following equation. So, the product of n1 and sine of theta1 is equal to n2 multiplied by sine of theta2, where n1 is the index of refraction of medium 1 and n2 is the index of refraction of medium number 2. So, from this equation, we can conclude the following important two points. So whenever the index of refraction of medium 1 is less than the index of refraction of medium 2, as in this case, angle 1, the angle of incidence will be greater than angle 2, the angle of refraction. Now, on the other hand, if we're examining our ray of light that is traveling in this direction from medium 2 to medium 1, we have the following case. So, because N1 is greater than N2, where N1 is now the index of refraction of glass and N2 is now the index of refraction of air, because N1 is greater than N2, that basically implies that theta 1 will be less than theta 2, where theta 1 is now this angle and theta 2 is now that angle. 